Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Rapul Baltic Seminar Week in 2021. My name is René Brandt and I'm International Product Manager at Rapul and I will guide you here today through the new story LMS, the FOMA resistance for your demand in the Baltics. Why is it important today to speak about FOMA resistance and that the benefits for your purposes? If we look to the development in the last years, the European rapeseed market come in uh, problems, has to struggle with a lot of new challenges. There is on one side the abiotic stress, mainly drought here in the last years in early spring and summer time. Next to that, we have to see an increasing influence of the political uh, pressure. There is uh, influence coming from the politics, especially for uh, pesticide usage or a limited fertilization in the coming years. On top of that, and not really a new topic, you know it, the demand, the ban from the insecticide treatment since a couple of years bring our rapeseed farmers in a new situation. They have to struggle in the last years with uh, more problems of a successful rapeseed establishment before winter. I would like to discuss with you the influence of uh, diseases like FOMA and why is it necessary here to have new resistances for the coming years. If we compare 2021, for example, with the last outstanding year 2014 we see there is a gap of yield we uh, have to struggle with the uh, decreasing production and that's why we as Rapul looking forward for new solutions like uh, LMS the new former resistance. I already mentioned since uh, 2014 15 we see here on this graph very well that the rapeseed production goes down. That had several reasons which I already touched at the slide before. And uh, we see here now for 2019, and I can add the figures for 2020, that we are now on a production level of 17 million tons. That is not enough to supply the own demand, uh, the domestic demand, what we have here in the European Union, which is on a level of 23 to 24 million. So we need import that bring the market in a challenging situation. And when you look right now to the Matif prices, you see how is it going on. I was thinking now, how can I bring you a, a little bit better in a connection to the topic FOMA? And I was uh, deciding, okay, why not to show you our impressions here from last year, from the testing field of uh, NPZ as one of the shareholders of Rapul here in the north of Germany. We saw such symptoms uh, which coming from a uh, very aggressive uh, FOMA infection uh, last year. We found the the infections in our plants, uh, which uh, was uh, uh, surprising us because we didn't expect that in such a high level. And uh, yeah, we found then these uh, typical FOMA symptoms and asking ourselves, okay, what, was, what are the reasons for that? Why we have to struggle here in our uh, conditions, in our testing field, with such a high FOMA infection. And we analyzed later then uh, the background data of this trial and we found out, okay, this trial was an called late sowing trial. So uh, um, these uh, variants uh, have to establish uh, before winter under quite challenging conditions. And we decided based on that to not treat them with fungicide as you usually do that with your rapeseed in the Baltics in autumn time. Uh, on top of that, uh, this rapeseed was then uh, very uh, weak, developed with uh, very low nitrogen intensities, but this we will see later then in uh, other slide. 
So to go a little bit uh, deeper, what is FOMA and do we always speak here really of, uh, about the same? No, it's not. Uh, I uh, would like to uh, uh, bring you a little bit more uh, information of uh, FOMA. The sexual stage, the name of the sexual stage is Leptosferia maculans, that is the international name where we can find this disease in all other countries. We see that uh, we have two different uh, types here in the European rapeseed market. More to the west we can find this Leptosferia maculans which is also a little bit more aggressive to the rapeseed. More in, in your area and influenced by the continental climate we see then more this Leptosferia biglobosa which is a little bit uh, less aggressive. So we see here that uh, um, even if the symptoms on the leaves look pretty uh, similar, it is not always then the same uh, uh, pathotype behind. We pay attention to, to FOMA and try to uh, uh, develop new resistances uh, together with our research department because we know that uh, FOMA lingam is still one of uh, the most important uh, uh, rapeseed diseases here in the European Union and with a very big impact depending then on the local conditions. Already mentioned we have different types and we see and a little bit decreasing importance from west to the east but it doesn't matter if uh, the conditions are right then uh, you can also have here a bigger impact in your area. Uh, what is necessary for a successful FOMA infection of course? We need uh, the right conditions so that means temperature, we need moisture, okay that is precipitation uh, and Early spring is uh, also welcome and uh, damage coming from uh, autumn time, so challenging conditions for the young rapeseed plants. Now probably you ask yourself, okay, um, new resistance, okay, uh, but we already have quite a lot of resistances like LM7. Yes, that is true. They were really um, helpful in the past to uh, support here the farmers with an broad protection. We, as Rapul mentioned already, we go further, we look how we can improve here the situation and give new alternative solutions to our customers. So we um, developed here the, the genetic, we make a further selection and we found a new advanced resistance called LMS which gives a new improved resistance and uh, it was also able with LMS to set up really a new benchmark for plant health which also give a better abiotic stress tolerance. Some more information uh, for you to a little bit to uh, identify the differences between LMS on one side and the uh, uh, older well-known resistances like LM7. LM7 uh, belongs to this group of R genes which are a qualitative uh, resistance. They are working directly from the beginning of the rapeseed growth. So they, when the rapeseed is starting to uh, develop the first leaves, then this resistance is turned on and working then over the whole time. Uh, additional resistances which we uh, see in our um, genetic, that is then the quantitative resistances, which uh, are, have a little bit more broad perspective, uh, we call them uh, field resistance. They are not focused on a single uh, FOMA race, working a little bit more broad and give here additional protection against uh, the FOMA. LMS, how was it developed here in Rapul? NBZ as one shareholder of the Rapul um, looked here for um, a way to identify in the early stage of the new candidates how they are um, working against uh, FOMA. So we developed a uh, FOMA testing system which is running more or less under semi-field conditions. What does it mean? We took our new materials, sow them out in the field, go then in the late autumn to the field, took these plants, bring them back into a uh, cold greenhouse 
which is running under semi-field conditions. We plant them, the plants there, and give them an artificial infection with uh, very aggressive FOMA races to see how susceptible are these new candidates or are there some candidates between which are showing a very strong uh, resistance against FOMA. Later on, we follow here the, uh, the growth and the behavior of this new material and check out later then the stem base in order to see here how are the different candidates performing. This gives us a, a clear picture and we were able to identify with LMS a new resistance which is coming from a new resource and uh, working in a totally other way than LM7 because here we see a very strong protection of the stem base so keep in mind LM7 was working very well on the, on the stage of the leaves and uh, stems here LMS is focused on the stem base and showing here very strong performance let's go a little bit further I could imagine now that you ask yourself, okay, new resistance, okay, good to know, um, let's see about the performance in the field, but where are my benefits in comparison to the fungicide uh, tradition, to my fungicide strategy? So, question, is it more marketing or is there something behind? Let's have a look. I shared already our impressions from last year here in the north of Germany, where we found in our testing field this FOMA infection. And we took the chance to go out and make some quick uh, scoring for, yeah, for the FOMA infections and for the performance of our tested varieties. So here you can see on the graph that we have two groups. We have one group with FOMA resistances, which are then uh, leading the list of these varieties. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, the varieties without FOMA resistance, they are then here at the end of the list and showing uh, very clear FOMA symptoms. Interesting was also this trial was not only a trial with a focus on sowing date. We also test here the variety performance on two different uh, nitrogen intensities. So we test them with 120 kg nitrogen applied in springtime and with 170 kg and we could see that the variant with 120 really bring our material into a big stress and in the other side the variant with 170 kg gives some more energy to the plants to compensate here than the FOMA infection so that is then here what we can see in the difference between yellow and green color. What can uh, you expect from our side? Yeah, maybe some of you which, yeah, which are in love with the Rexy, they already recognized uh, this uh, story LMS. We are not the only one on the market with this new resistance. We are the first one who was able to to combine the at the moment most powerful resistances. That is on one side the turnip yellow virus resistance and on the other side the already post LMS story. What is the benefit of this combination of these uh, two powerful resistances? Yeah, we see it here. We, we speak now uh, about a new generation of hybrids called this climate change generation of hybrids, which give us uh, a lot of um, additional uh, benefits. So what are the most important for you? Based on the turnip yellow virus trade, we see an additional yield boost of 5-7%. Depends on the uh, local condition, can go up to 10 and more. Uh, we have an additional growth boost in the autumn time, which gives us more flexibility in, uh, in the sowing date. And the LMS uh, story, the LMS resistance, gives us a much better improved plant health, so very robust material and that is then also supporting our yield stability. So very attractive package for the challenge which you have to struggle right now 
outside in the fields. And probably most uh, important slide here in my presentation are some uh, very interesting data from Czech Republic. I would like to explain. We, we know now that uh, this LMS is giving us a strong plant health and uh, while in the past the first LMS uh, varieties were able to set up a new benchmark for plant health, now the new candidates are able to convince with yield and plant health and we see that here with these two varieties which were here in the official trials in Czech Republic leading in yield and plant health. Plant health, how these uh, people from SPZO uh, developed it and how they uh, scoring that. They established since a few years a uh, called plant health index which based on the scoring against FOMA, sclerotinia, verticillium, so that is an all-in-all -all index and giving here a an, an good uh, feeling about the robustness of these new varieties. Let's have a look to further benefits of this LMS resistance. We see here that not only that uh, there is a uh, protected stem base, no, there is also um, a very robust stem, a very robust material against other diseases which came late then in the vegetation and we're speaking here about verticillium. So this uh, strong, powerful material is showing then here a higher robustness against this uh, um, soil-borne disease uh, verticillium. And that is then uh, interesting for the farmers uh, between you, which are uh, looking for a solution for uh, usage in very tight crop rotation. So this new material gives some alternatives also for this case. We were the first one with this uh, resistance in the market. Uh, first uh, registration uh, was already 2015 in France. Now it took a couple of years to uh, improve this uh, material also in the way of better yield. And, and now we can find this uh, resistance in several further varieties which are already introduced to the Baltic market and you can see that also in the next years we will have further varieties with this disease resistance background. So I come to the end of my presentation and uh, I would like to summarize uh, the points which we have heard here in the last minutes. Uh, yeah, FOMA still uh, one of the most powerful and important uh, diseases with a very high impact. I just want to, uh, to underline here the, the figures, for example, from uh, UK in, in West Europe. They, they somehow estimate an, an impact, a negative impact of up to 100 million euros per year just because of FOMA. We see also that uh, um, yeah, in the past uh, there was uh, already a broad uh, package of different uh, FOMA resistances uh, available, but uh, the point, most of the used uh, hybrids, uh, yeah, they worked with this LM7 uh, uh, resistance. Yeah, and so uh, um, it's no surprise that uh, these uh, puddle types they start uh, shifting, they start to yeah, find adaptations to this uh, LM7 resistance. And so we, we see right now an observation that this resistance and the efficiency is going down. So it's good now to have with uh, LMS a new solution, a new alternative resistance for our rapeseed in uh, the European Union. We still have uh, a lot of uh, fungicides uh, which are, uh, give us uh, protection against FOMA but keep also here in mind we lose more and more of these products because of uh, end of the registration and no prolongation so um, the, the uh, alternatives uh, here regarding fungicides uh, decreasing. There is the political wish to reduce here the, the pesticides to, to go down uh, and, and that means we need the alternatives and that is here then of course LMS. Yeah, Rapul, 
Uh, with our focus always to go ahead, we developed here already in the past successfully this new resistance in order to, to have something new for you, powerful and working and also in the order to improve here the integrated pest management to have a better resistance management in the European Union. As an expert for, for Rapeseed, uh, of course, we also looked uh, forward and, and go a step forward in this way that we combine as one of the first breeders this uh, LMS resistance with the powerful turnip yellow virus resistance for more yield stability, for more success in your production. And yeah, last uh, point from my side. Um, yeah, Dominator and Aquila are now, right now, uh, it, um, in our portfolio, the most uh, powerful and convincing uh, hybrids with turnip yellow virus and LMS. And they are definitely the right uh, choice for farmers who look for an alternative in tight crop rotations. So, thank you very much for your attention. I hope you uh, like this uh, small presentation. Uh, and uh, hopefully we have the chance in summertime to see each other then uh, maybe in Acrovisia. Otherwise, if that will be not possible, um, yeah, I wish you all the best for a successful rapeseed season 2021. Uh, stay healthy, all the best to you and bye bye.